Migrations and conquests disrupted trade networks around the Mediterranean. The replacement of goods from long-range trade with local products was a trend throughout the old Roman lands. Non-local goods appearing in the archaeological record are usually luxury goods or metalworks. In the 7th and 8th centuries, new commercial networks were developing in northern Europe. Goods like furs, walrus ivory and amber were delivered from the Baltic region to Western Europe, contributing to the development of new trade centers in East Anglia, Northern Francia and Scandinavia. Conflicts over the control of trade routes and toll stations were common. The various Germanic states in the West all had coinages that imitated existing Roman and Byzantine forms. The flourishing Islamic economy's constant demand for fresh labor force and raw materials opened up a new market for Europe around 750. Europe emerged as a major supplier of house slaves and slave soldiers for Al-Andalus, Northern Africa and the Levant. Venice developed into the most important European center of slave trade. In addition, timber, fur and arms were delivered from Europe to the Mediterranean, while Europe imported spices, medicine, incense, and silk from the Levant. The large rivers connecting distant regions facilitated the expansion of transcontinental trade. Contemporaneous reports indicate that Anglo-Saxon merchants visited fairs at Paris, pirates preyed on tradesmen traveling on the Danube. And Eastern Frankish merchants reached as far as Zaragoza in Al-Andalus. The idea of Christian unity endured although differences in ideology and practice between the Eastern and Western churches became apparent by the 6th century. The formation of new realms reinforced the traditional Christian concept of the separation of church and state in the West, whereas this notion was alien to Eastern clergymen who regarded the Roman state as an instrument of divine providence. In the late 7th century, clerical marriage emerged as a permanent focus of controversy. After the Muslim conquests, the Byzantine emperors could less effectively intervene in the West. When Leo III prohibited the display of paintings representing human figures in places of worship, the papacy openly rejected his claim to declare new dogmas by imperial edicts. Although the Byzantine church condemned iconoclasm in 843, further issues such as fierce rivalry for ecclesiastic jurisdiction over newly converted peoples, and the unilateral modification of the Nicene Creed in the West widened to the extent that the differences were greater than the similarities. Few of the Western bishops looked to the papacy for religious or political leadership. The only part of Western Europe where the papacy had influence was Britain, where Gregory had sent the Gregorian mission in 597 to convert the Anglo-Saxons to Christianity. Irish missionaries were most active in Western Europe between the 5th and the 7th centuries. People did not visit churches regularly. Instead, meetings with itinerant clergy and pilgrimages to popular saints' shrines were instrumental in the spread of Christian teaching. Clergymen used special handbooks known as penitentials to determine the appropriate acts of penance, typically prayers, and fasts, for sinners. The early Middle Ages witnessed the rise of Christian monasticism. Monastic ideals spread through hagiographical literature, especially the life of Anthony. Most European monasteries were of the type that focuses on the community experience of the spiritual life, called Cenobitism. The Italian monk Benedict of Nursia developed the Benedictine rule which became widely used in Western monasteries. In the East, the monastic rules compiled by Theodore the Studite gained popularity after they were adopted in the Great Lavra on Mount Athos in the 960s, setting a precedent for further Athenite monasteries, and turning the mount into the most important center of orthodox monasticism. Monks and monasteries had a deep effect on religious and political life, in various cases acting as land trusts for powerful families and important centers of political authority. They were the main and sometimes only outposts of education and literacy in a region. Many of the surviving manuscripts of the Latin classics were copied in monasteries. Monks were also the authors of new works, including history, theology, and other subjects, written by authors such as Bede, a native of northern England. The Byzantine missionary Constantine developed Old Church Slavonic as a new liturgical language, establishing the basis for flourishing Slavic religious literature, around 900 a new script was adopted. 
now known for Constantine's monastic name as Cyrillic. In Western Christendom, lay influence over church affairs came to a climax in the 10th century. Aristocrats regarded the churches and monasteries under their patronage as their personal property, and simony, the sale of church offices, was a common practice. Simony aroused a general fear about salvation as many believed that irregularly appointed priests could not confer valid sacraments such as baptism. Monastic communities were the first to react to this fear by the rigorous observance of their rules. The establishment of Cluny Abbey in Burgundy in 909 initiated a more radical change as Cluny was freed from lay control and placed under the protection of the papacy. The Cluniac reform spread through the founding of new monasteries and the reform of monastic life in old abbeys. Cluny's example indicated that the reformist idea of the liberty of the church could be achieved through submission to the papacy. The Merovingian kings customarily distributed Francia among their sons and destroyed their own power base by extensive land grants. In the northeastern Frankish realm of Austrasia, the Arnulfings were the most prominent beneficiaries of royal favor. As hereditary mayors of the palace, they were the power behind the Austrasian throne from the mid-7th century. One of them, Pepin of Herstau, also assumed power in the central Frankish realm of Neustria. His son Charles Martel took advantage of the permanent Muslim threat to confiscate church property and raise new troops by parceling it out among the recruits. The Carolingians, as Charles Martel's descendants are known, succeeded the Merovingians as the new royal dynasty of Francia in 751. This year the last Merovingian king Childeric III was deposed, and Charles Martel's son Pepin the Short was crowned king with the consent of the Frankish leaders and the papacy. Pepin attacked the Lombards and enforced their promise to respect the possessions of the papacy. His subsequent donation of central Italian territories to the Holy See marked the beginnings of the Papal States. Pepin left his kingdom in the hands of his two sons, Charles, more often known as Charlemagne or Charles the Great, and Carloman. When Carloman died of natural causes, Charlemagne reunited Francia and embarked upon a program of systematic expansion, rewarding allies with war booty and command over parcels of land. He subjugated the Saxons, conquered the Lombards, and created a new border province in northern Spain. Between 791 and 803, Frankish troops destroyed the Avars which facilitated the development of small Slavic principalities, mainly ruled by ambitious warlords under Frankish suzerainty. The coronation of Charlemagne as emperor on Christmas Day 800 marked a return of the Western Roman Empire and asserted the Frankish realm's equivalence to the Byzantine state. In 812, as a result of careful and protracted negotiations, the Byzantines acknowledged Charlemagne's new title but without recognizing him as a second emperor of the Romans. The Carolingian Empire was administered by an itinerant court that traveled with the emperor, as well as approximately 300 imperial officials called counts, who administered the counties the empire had been divided into. The central administration supervised the counts through imperial emissaries called Missi Dominici, who served as roving inspectors and troubleshooters. The clerics of the royal chapel were responsible for recording important royal grants and decisions. Charlemagne's court in Aachen was the center of the cultural revival sometimes referred to as the Carolingian Renaissance. Literacy increased, as did development in the arts, architecture, and jurisprudence, as well as liturgical and scriptural studies. Charlemagne's chancery, or writing office, made use of a new script today known as Carolingian Minuscule, allowing a common writing style that advanced communication across much of Europe. Charlemagne sponsored changes in church liturgy, imposing the Roman form of church service on his domains, as well as the Gregorian chant in liturgical music for the churches. An important activity for scholars during this period was the copying, correcting, and dissemination of basic works on religious and secular topics, with the aim of encouraging learning. New works on religious topics and schoolbooks were also produced. Grammarians of the period modified the Latin language, changing it from the classical Latin of the Roman Empire into a more flexible form now called medieval Latin. Charlemagne continued the Frankish tradition of dividing his empire between all his sons, but only one son, Louis the Pious, was still alive by 813. 
Just before Charlemagne died in 814, he made Louis co-emperor. Louis's reign was marked by numerous divisions of the empire among his sons, and civil wars between various alliances of father and sons over the control of various parts of the empire. By the Treaty of Verdun, 843, a kingdom between the Rhine and Rhone rivers was created for Lothair I to go with his lands in Italy, and his imperial title was recognized. Louis the German was in control of Bavaria and the eastern lands in modern-day Germany. Charles the Bald received the western Frankish lands, comprising most of modern-day France. Charlemagne's grandsons and great-grandsons divided their kingdoms between their descendants, eventually causing all internal cohesion to be lost. There was a brief reuniting of the empire by Charles the Fat in 884, although the actual units of the empire retained their separate administrations. By the time he died early in 888, the Carolingians were close to extinction, and non-dynastic claimants assumed power in most of the successor states. In the eastern lands the dynasty died out with the death of Louis the Child, and the selection of the Franconian Duke Conrad I as king. In West Francia, the dynasty was restored first in 898, then in 936. But the last Carolingian kings were unable to keep the powerful aristocracy under control. In 987 the dynasty was replaced, with the crowning of Hugh Capet as king. Although the Capetian kings remained nominally in charge, much of the political power devolved to the local lords in medieval France. Frankish culture and the Carolingian methods of state administration had a significant impact on the neighboring peoples. Frankish threat triggered the formation of new states along the empire's eastern frontier, Bohemia, Moravia, and Croatia. The breakup of the Carolingian Empire was accompanied by invasions, migrations, and raids by external foes. The Atlantic and northern shores were harassed by the Vikings, who also raided the British Isles and settled there. In 911, the Viking chieftain Rollo received permission from the Frankish king Charles the Simple to settle in what became Normandy. The eastern parts of the Frankish kingdoms, especially Germany and Italy, were under continual Magyar assault until the invaders' defeat at the Battle of Lechfeld in 955. In the Mediterranean, Arab pirates launched regular raids against Italy in southern France. The Muslim states also began expanding the Aglubids conquered Sicily, and the Umayyads of Al-Andalus annexed the Balearic Islands. 